So I was assigned the project of creating a wet bulb globe temperature calculation to add to the functionality of MetPy's toolkit over the summer. I would like to first start off by saying that my Python skills entering into the summer were basic. So the first month of the internship was spent getting to understand Python syntax and using the Jupyter Lab notebooks to learn more about what MetPy had to offer. In my three years of undergrad as a meteorology student, I have never heard of the WBGT index until given the assignment. So my first task was knowing what the index even is and why it is used. NWS defines it as a measure of the heat stress in direct sunlight, which takes into account temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover, or solar radiation. This differs from the heat index, which takes into consideration temperature, humidity, and is calculated for shady areas. If you work or exercise in direct sunlight, this is a good element to monitor. Military agencies, OSHA, and many nations use the WBGT as a guide to managing workload in direct sunlight. This helps produce the most accurate temperature readings. It helps manage workloads effectively and optimizes performance in high temperature environments. The use of WBGT as an environmental monitoring measure during exercise in the heat was invented in the early 1950s in response to the number of heat casualties occurring in the United States Armed Services that occurred during the 40s and 50s. For example, from 1942 to 1944, 198 soldiers died due to heat illness during military training. The National Weather Service is attempting to include WBGT in their gridded forecast products, so my supervisor believed it was beneficial to add into MedPi's toolkit. At first, I was given an article that is published by the NWS's version of the Webbulb Globe Temperature Calculator, written by Dr. Vincent DiMicelli and Stephen Pilts. The equations given from the article are featured as calculation number one on my poster. At first glance, these equations seem easily understandable and simple to code. To my surprise, after getting outrageous globe temperature values, the formulas were not as straightforward as I thought. Some meteorological values were easy to calculate. However, globe temperature became troublesome. That brought me to my next task. Figuring out why globe temperature data is not regularly obtained like other variables that are used within it. Globe temperature is historically taken by using a black globe thermometer, which is a metal sphere usually made of copper that is painted matte black with a temperature sensor in the middle. The globe thermometers are expensive and a few stations have them to keep records. That is why creating a linearized equation for this index is necessary. The equation is derived from a formula suggested by physicist Lars Alexander Cohen, which is based off the heat transfer theory. The resulting equation is a fourth degree polynomial in terms of the globe temperature. The idea of the WBGT index being calculated from meteorological par parameters is that the data is readily available by the NWS, which I did not find to be the case. The first calculation given by Dr. DiMicelli for globe temperature involved parameters such as solar radiance, a convective heat flux coefficient, direct beam flux radiation, and diffuse beam flux radiation variables, which I did not find to be regularly collected and or available by the NWS. The article by Dr. DiMicelli and Stephen Piltz also was not explicit when explaining how their numbers were obtained for these variables. For example, H, which is the convective heat flux coefficient, is specified as 0 0.315, but that is not always the case. The coefficient changes often and weighs heavy within the globe temperature formula, meaning it has to have very little error for this temperature value to be correct. Unfortunately, the article does not explain this. Within all of my tribulations, I took a side road on trying to create a zenith angle calculator, which is needed for the WBGT calculation. There were sources online on how to determine solar positions that also seemed straightforward, but were indeed not. So I ended up using NOAA's resources to input zenith angle when necessary. I figured that was something I could come back to if I had time. Solar positions are a headache I didn't see coming, but back to why this globe temperature is a problem. I decided to peek into the JavaScript being ran by the WBGT calculator provided by the NWS to see what they were doing right and I was doing wrong. I noticed we were definitely using the same equations, but I'm no master in JavaScript, so I was unsure of many functions they were calling. However, I did find out how to calculate direct beam and diffuse beam radiation from cloud cover that they were getting data from the National Digital Forecast Database. Cool, so a couple of variables down. 
I just had to figure out how to calculate solar irradiance and heat flow coefficient, and I would be in the clear. After some time passed and numbers were still not matching, I got back to researching. I found OSHA also had a WBGT calculator online that they cite, and they cite all of their articles and formulas they use for their calculations. That brings me to calculation number two on my poster. This is how OSHA gets correct values for globe temperature. They use a formula to iteratively solve not only wet bulb temperature, but also globe temperature. I certainly am no expert at iteratively solving for variables. Luckily, I had some awesome mentors to help. Back to the drawing board. I created a function to iteratively solve for globe temperature, as you, and then you guessed it, still did not get correct, the correct values. Back to square one. I figured out what variables inside globe temperature were giving me trouble. Well, I know my constants were right. I trust that NOAA to give me a correct zenith angle. So it was down to solar irradiance value and convective heat transfer coefficient. OSHA cites an article that not only gives formulas on how to calculate zenith angle, so I did take another stab on my zenith angle calculator with the formulas given from this article, but had trouble understanding some of the variables that were not explained well in this paper. The article explained how to calculate solar irradiance, so I continued with the WBGT calculations and was hopeful because I had another variable cross off the list. Well, just kidding, the values were not matching, which means there must be a zenith angle discrepancy, but I checked on. I had to get an accurate value for my coefficient. OSHA's article follows and explains that H is determined by using an empirical correlation for heat transfer from a sphere which involves the Nusslet number, the Reynolds number, and the Prandtl number, which if you do not know, like I did not, are a whole bunch of equations that are made from taking real world measurements and turning them into calculations. So I did what the article told me to do. I plugged and substituted all of these equations as I was supposed to and still no proper H value. So I did what any confused, frustrated programmer would do. I peeked back into the JavaScript world again, but this time for OSHA's calculator. Does this sound familiar? At this point, I was still confused as to why I was not getting correct answers, and it was even more frustrating that none of the articles I was provided give proper testable numbers I could use to check if my code was even computing these numbers properly. The original article does, does give the preliminary test values, but they leave out crucial information, like the time of day they collected their values. That is very important to the zenith angle. They also didn't speak of what age value they used. Did they continually use 0.2? 315 for the three test days they provided, or did the coefficient change with each test? OSHA's article didn't even provide test values, only their percentage of error when compared to measured temperatures from the black globe thermometer. So I was able to test my WBGT values with the avail available calculators online. OSHA additionally provides a globe temperature value, which the NWS does not, but I did but I had little idea if my H was correct or if I was using the same zenith angles as these websites. I obviously had more research to do, and it wasn't until the last week I stumbled upon an article with a familiar name and familiar authors. After reading this one, I found that the article provided by the NWS is only a paraphrased version of the whole article, which does have all the necessary values. Finally had testable material. I went back and forth on two versions of the calculators I coded using the new information I found, and yet I still do not have correct values. The full article explains how H is calculated using multiple power regression. Unfortunately, I did not have enough time to learn about how to solve H this way. And I know by now you're thinking, Caitlin, you were so close to finishing this, don't give up. But fear not, friends. Although this internship is coming to an end, I will co be continuing on this project. Coincidentally, the research I'm doing with a professor for the upcoming semester is on heat waves in Florida, and I will be studying wet bulb globe temperature, heat index, and environmental stress index. So this is not over. Any questions? Thanks, Caitlin. That's a, a really great poster and a really stressful calculation. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I definitely like watching presentations more than I like doing the presentation. <laughs> um, what are some of your sort of, like if you had, you know, an infinite internship here and whatnot, what are some of your immediate next steps for so like, I need to solving to learn problems? How 
two solves um, the H regressively. So I'm going to continue to look into that. And then the other thing is I, it's just as Lauren was saying with her whole presentation is where data is and finding data, which I had a lot of trouble with over the summer. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. This uh, is something that I think would be really helpful, even if it <laughs> takes some time to do right. So I just want to say Caitlin's project is a product of what happens when you as a mentor say, oh, yeah, that looks simple enough. We can get that. And well, if we need more things after the summer's, uh, you know, the summer's still going, we'll figure it out. And then it turns out, oh, it's not as simple as you thought. And just because the weather service is going to implement this operationally doesn't mean all the pieces you need are relatively easily available. And another issue was the first original article that was given and then that is posted by the National Weather Service is just a paraphrase of a larger article that is more informative and better to research from. So that was frustrating because I didn't find the full article until the last week of internship. So I wasn't able to integrate all of the new knowledge that I had and then all of the um, preliminary testing values that were pretty much necessary in order for me to make sure my numbers were correct, which was another frustrating issue that I was having because I was getting numbers, but how do I know that these numbers are correct? Which was a problem as well. Uh, yeah, uh, Caitlin, you said you were getting the wrong values. Uh, what were you comparing the values that you got against? Right. Um, there are two WBG calculators online as of right now. Weather, um, there's one on weather.gov, which is sponsored by the NWS, and OSHA also has their own. So I was using my latitude and longitude and the weather conditions here in Philadelphia, and I was putting those parameters into both of those calculators to hopefully get back the same number. Unfortunately, only one actually shows you the globe temperature number, and one does not. So I, was, I really only had the actual WBGT number to compare. I didn't know if my globe temperature number was off or not. And I can't help but wonder if they're doing the calculation right. Well, I actually, um, Sean and Ryan got me the JavaScript for both of the OSHA calculator and the weather.gov calculator. Um, the OSHA one was a little bit more complex, and I do not know JavaScript. I coded in Java very seldomly, um, and obviously JavaScript is a little bit different. So I went about going through it to find out um, the NWS calculator definitely goes by this article. Um, and then the OSHA definitely goes about using this. Um, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, ma magic magician. Um, so I don't know how to solve things iteratively. And I have not gone to my um, numerical predictions class yet. I'm actually doing that next semester. So I might find out how to solve equations iteratively after that class, but as of right now, I'm just, <laughs> just cruising on in. So there's a lot of challenges here. Like one of the parameters was the zenith angle oh, that right. they were using in, in the, uh, the JavaScript. And the ways they were doing it, you know, are all over the place. The one from the weather service, if you dump the JavaScript, they've got an entire solar calendar in their you know, code base that's not even used, it turns out. Um, and when you start trying to look up methods of calculating the solar zenith angle for a particular date and time and latitude and longitude, um, that turns out that itself is not a trivial problem. There are published algorithms, but that just every time we turned and looked at one of these parameters in there that you needed to do the calculation that opened its own um, rabbit hole of, of other things to deal with. You wind up shaving the yak. Exactly. Yeah, we took a side road, and I was like, oh, well, if I can't get this WGT calculator, I'll create a zenith angle oh. calculator, because there's <laughs> there's simple calculations, which seems like they will work. Go to find out, but they don't, surprisingly. Well, 
it's it's problematic when you're trying to compete like you choose a method then you're trying to compare against somebody else's calculations and um i still have about 10 tabs open here of different solar zenith calculators so and then in terms of the actual physical parameters the nws uh, javascript is using a combination of um, values from the ndfd uh, along with observed values from the closest station to a given lat lawn point. And in order to make, say, the um, moisture parameters consistent with the observed temperature, there's a lot of um, iterations that, that happen just to sort of make things physically consistent. And it's, it's just all really weird what the weather service is doing there. That's, yeah, it's very much the, uh, oh, it's it's not quite, let's fit a line to something in Excel and publish it in a paper, but, but damn, it seems like they're trying hard in some of these cases. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the backup, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>